All right, guys, so we're just going to get started. Thank you for being on time. And thank you for registering for, for these lunch and learns. As we do recognize these are optional. Um, so we really do appreciate you guys, you know, registering for this and, and hanging out with us for an hour. So for today's lunch and learn, we're really going to be focusing on the child's strengths, but specifically for the 6 to 21. So we'll be discussing how to really rate this domain, hear some of your concerns, and answer some of your questions regarding this specific core domain. So we're just going to get started. We're going to start with some introductions and some typical tech coaching. So for introductions, my name is Cynthia. Most of you already have known me. Um, I am a training manager at CCF, as well as one of the regional leads for the Trans New York Technical Assistance Institute. And really what that means is that we offer support and training and technical assistance to users of the Trans New York, whether it be care managers, supervisors, or some other support staff, and really recognizing and helping on really taking this not only from the certification, but really applying this into practice um, with your own cases or really helping uh, your own supervisees if that's your role and then i have mark here who will introduce himself yes hey everybody i'm mark lardner i uh am here to support cynthia today and to talk about the child strengths um, my role currently is i'm the director of the Kansas new york institute um, and i'm a member of the team at the university of kentucky school of public health at their uh, center for innovation and population health so I'm really happy to be here with you guys today and uh, interested in the discussion about strengths and how they kind of uh, get um, used in your practice and how maybe we can have a conversation to clarify things for those kind of practice certification tests as well. So let's get this rolling. So part of the learning objectives to, for today, it's really gonna be about defining strengths and develop skills for identifying useful strengths. We're also going to be able to identify barriers to accurate and efficiently complete the child strengths domain. And then we're really going to develop skills for applying useful strengths in practice. So that's our goal for today. And these are going to be the learning objectives. Let me just check the chat. So we wanna start off firstly with what is a strength? So let's take a moment to really think about this and, and really conceptualize what is a strength. So if you can unmute yourself or chat in, and the first thing that comes to your head when you think about a strength is what? Something that you're good at. Something that you're good at, absolutely. Something you enjoy. Something you enjoy, absolutely. And I would push you guys a little further in thinking about your own strengths. So what are some of your strengths that you have, whether it be a personal strength or an environmental strength? What are some of those strengths? Something that works to my advantage. Absolutely, tell me a little bit more about that, Emily. I can't think of anything. Let's say like a uh, religion. Okay. Um, if I have a strong faith, then I can Hi, feel better with my mental health. Absolutely. And look at that. You, you got that off the fly. And sometimes it's really hard thinking about strength because it's not something we tend to really zone in on. We tend to really think about the needs and what it is that, you know, would help us with something, right? But when we think about strength, it's important to really think about and understand as to how it really creates this pathway to meaning and well-being. It's basically what you guys are echoing, right? That it supports, that it helps, that it brings a well-being, that you enjoy it into a person's life. But there are really a variety of ways in which people can actually really use these strengths and particularly as to apply with the people that they work with, whether that be how they experience some challenges and use strengths to, to really help that well-being or who have notable challenges. So strengths can either be what we like to say it's personal characteristics. So when we think about a personal characteristic, we're thinking about talents and interests, right? Or it can actually be an environmental. When we think about environmental, we're talking about family of origin, which is that first item in the child's strengths domain. And that item is super important because 
many times the only strength that a child can have is actually their family. So it's really important to have these conversations because the personal and the environmental strength and interactions for an individual is really key to really understand the presence of those strengths. So we do know that children with known strengths tend to really function better when the needs, when needs are present. So let's do an example. Let's take this young person that's on the screen right now, right, with the guitar, and let's use the talents and interests, for example. So let's just simply say that this young person in the picture is, is a gifted musician, right? But maybe she may not recognize it, or maybe her family may not recognize it. So therefore, she can't really bring any meaning or well-being. But once we recognize that musical gift or that talent and it's supported, then it becomes an expression of that strength, right? Then we can start building up that strength. And as this little girl actually becomes more involved with the music or the talent, that the value of that talent really tends to increase. But if there's really no involvement, such as guitar lessons or, you know, practicing or doing certain things, if there's absolutely no involvement, then that talent then would not be valuable to a group. And those that took the CANS general training already know that a strength is really a characteristic of a person in the environment that really describes a situation that promotes meaning and well-being in that particular person's life. So why do we focus on strengths? So we know that strength is, is something very important, right? But why do we really focus on strength? Why is that included in the assessment and why is it critical? And you can just check that in or unmute yourself. Why focus on strength? It allows for a person-centered approach and family-driven plan that can overall enhance the well-being of your client. Right, and I, and I like that term because when we think about strength, we want to be able to really identify them and really include them into that plan of care as a way to support some emerging needs, right? It can be critical in, in helping that youth really pull from that strength and, that, and, that, um, and bring them, pull from that strength and bring them well-being for them. So the first thing we like to look at is the strength domain is important because the presence of strengths can support progress, which is what you were just saying right now, Jessica, right? And the strengths can really also help us achieve positive outcomes and improve well-being for the youth and the families. So for one, a child's functioning is probably best addressed when their strengths are increasing. And the reason is probably because strengths really migrate the needs and during difficult times, they can really overcome the obstacles, the barriers, and any challenges by really utilizing their strengths and not their needs. Do you wanna add so, something, Mike? Sure, so you know, I think um, another reasons as well, to kind of build on Jessica's point and the points you were making, Cynthia, are, um, I find it's a good strategy to keep people engaged, right? There's, uh, you know, there's, there's something that feels a lot better sometimes about discussing you know, something hopeful about discussing strengths with folks. Um, it builds your relationship and keeps them engaged in the work we're trying to do. The other thing is I think um, I don't necessarily take for granted that uh, some of the families I'm working with or youth I'm working with have the same experience that I do, right? So here's the way I think about my experience. I can wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror and I see you know, Mark, and Mark has some good attributes, but Mark's got some stuff he's got to work on too, right? But I see both sides of that. Um, and I find that to be a privilege, right? And I don't necessarily think about the youth sometimes, or I know that when they look in the mirror, they don't necessarily see those good parts. And so if I do my work in a way that is only focused on their needs, what I'm doing is I'm reinforcing that reflection that is solely a reflection of problems. Um, and I don't want that to be the case because it's not something I believe about them. I believe that there are real assets or real resources, real strengths that they have inside them. And so I wanna make sure I'm, my focus on strengths helps them build that perception of themselves, which we do think, like to Cynthia's point, does enhance overall well-being. And so, you know, sometimes it's hard in our work, we kind of set these lofty goals or we think about you know, things, you know, we're enhancing well-being or other things, that, but on a real practical level, you know, simple things like that have a lot of impact. Um, and our ability to kind of build that into our work 
you know, these kind of small tweaks in our practice, I think do what not only help engage people, but I think they have, um, you know, they can pay benefits for years down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you think about strength, no one is really born with strength except like their family, right? Strengths are really nurtured and built upon, but we also need to find ways to recognize those strengths. So being able to recognize those strengths or even identify areas within this specific domain and think about what are some of these items and what are they asking us, right? Which we'll go over these items in the next slide. But really thinking about strengths as really separate but not the opposite of needs. So when we're rating the child's strengths, it is critical to really keep our assessment of strengths separated from the way we think about needs, right? We wanna be able to really build on these things and, and think about young people who enjoy certain activities, right? And having these conversations and really trying to figure out, okay, how can I really engage them into this specific thing, whether it be swimming, whether it be singing, whether it be these guitar lessons we just talked about, whether it be baseball, right? How do we get a youth who really finds interest in this and really start engaging them in that so that way it can be something that they can draw on and, and go to when they feel the need um, or stress or challenges that they can really pull from that. So there are 13 items in the child strength domain which really describes the assets and how do you support or really facilitate these, the healthy development. So when we think about these strengths, it's critical to really build this into the plan of care. And I know we speak about this a lot. So the 13 items, we have family of origin. It's also important, let me just start this. It's also important to really look at what the item description is asking you. And it oftentimes when it comes to family of origin, it's really, thinking about, oh, it's just a bio family or, you know, it's mom and dad, but really what the item description is, whatever or however family of origin is really described or how the real family defines it. So think about the families that you serve and how do they define family of origin, right? Because we have a very different definition of family of origin. We think mom, dad, and siblings. But no, the item is really asking you, what are some of those positive and supportive relationships that really exist with that family? And family is however that specific family really defines it. When we're thinking about social relationship with adults, we're really asking you to look at how is this child really interacting with adults who are outside the family? So not how they interact with mom or dad or grandma or their siblings, but really it's more so of how they interact with a therapist, a doctor, um, teachers, so other adults that are outside the family. Relationship stability is another one, right? We're really looking at a stability of real significant relationships within that child's life which can include family members, but it can also include other individuals that may have had a stable relationship for that um, youth. When we're looking at optimism, does the child really have a positive orientation towards themselves or the future? Um, by the time you're in high school or junior high school, you, you know, you have goals and you have dreams to be a doctor, to be an athlete, to be a musician, right? That's what we look for when we think about optimism, right? Resourcefulness. Does the child really have the ability to be able to really identify or even use external resources that can help them really manage some challenges? When we think about adaptability, is the child really able to adapt and respond to changing circumstances? Can they really adjust? Can, can they transition properly? Um, Persistence. Can the child really work towards accomplishing tasks or activities that may or may not be challenging, that may have obstacles to them, that it's new to them? Um, can they really work through those challenges? Resilience and internal strength and talents and interest is one of those things that can also be confusing. But when it comes to resilience and internal strength, it's really asking you, does the child themselves really recognize their own strength? And do they know how to use that strength to support them for healthy development? Whereas talents and interests is more about does the child enjoy and does it help them enable healthy development? 
So healthy development can include art, singing, cooking, baseball, basketball. Cultural identity is another one um, that can sometimes uh, trip people up. But when we're talking about cultural identity, we're talking about the actual child's view of themselves really belonging to a specific cultural group. And I want to remind you that culture really involves a lot of different things. So culture is really about race, it's really religion, ethnicity, their upbringing, their life experiences, their gender, their education, and I can go on and on. But when we think about culture, we want to make sure that we're really capturing everything about culture and how it really reflects for the child's view for themselves as belonging. And then the last one is spiritual and religious. And what this really item is asking you is, is that child really involved in spiritual and religious practices within their community? Any questions so far or any of these items can sometimes be confusing or do you look at these items differently? And I wanna hear from you, what are some of these items that when you're reading them or when you think about it, um, it, it may look different? Because I wanna practice this. So I wanna make sure that, you know, we have the conversation about these items and we know what these items are really asking us. So I'm going to share something just to, to build on what you're saying, Cynthia. I think um, one of the things I used to do, uh, so I used to work at a treatment foster care agency. And so I had a, you know, we were, had these tiny cubes, really. But there were two people to each cube, which actually kind of makes me laugh now how close together we all were all the time in this tiny office, which we worked out of. Um, now in COVID times where you can't get close to anybody, it does seem kind of like crazy. Uh, but anyway, so I, my office mate was this guy, Neil, and we were, um, you know, using the cans and it was a struggle. Like strengths were a struggle for us because it just was one of those things. So we started this thing where we talk about kids, but we did try, instead of thinking about the manual and what I was saying, we try to like think about each of the item and pick a certain kid because we knew all the same kids. And we're like, that's this kid, right? So like social relationships with adults, so every time I look at that now, I don't, you know, I'm not even 100% sure what the definition is. In my head, I always think that's Ricardo because this kid Ricardo, he was the most smooth talking, like he could sell you anything. Like if you were, anytime you met him, he always was first person like chatting you up, talking about this, talking about that. Um, and he had a lot of problems. And I think part of that was his defense mechanism. So if he kept the conversation going, he knew that I wasn't going to like steer it in a direction that he didn't want things to talk about. But it was a real strength for him. Like I would have hired that kid to do any job to work alongside me because one, he was kind of ambitious. He was a good talker and all these things. So what I, the point of the story is not about Ricardo, but that it's really helpful to kind of conceptualize these things outside of the manual or the reference guide and really to build your level of comfort to think about that. Who's the youth or that person that best personifies this kind of strength and then anytime i'm writing it i can always relate back like okay that's kind of it's kind of like this kid or it's kind of like that kid i was working with um if you can do that with somebody else even better right so if you're able to find a partner at work just to talk through some of these things because i do find strengths challenging and when um cynthia and the team were telling me they were doing this lunch and learn on the strengths i wanted to kind of participate in it because i remember like this was always a struggle for me and that was one of the tricks that kind of helped me kind of master it a little bit better. Thank you. And when we think about strength, how do you guys really assess a child? What do you guys look for? Are any of the items confusing? Because oftentimes we see like spiritual cultural identity as it being a great strength, right? But we tend to rate a zero for it, right? And when we're thinking about the zero, we're really saying, oh, we know what this youth spiritual religious group is, right? They are involved, they, you know, they are within that community. And when we think about cultural identity, we're thinking about, well, this child knows what their view is of their self-belonging, 
They know where they want to be, right? But many times we don't know, but we rate it as a zero. And what that's really communicating to a system is that, well, this youth is connected. So let's use these connections and build upon them to, to help them, right? Where we really want to put a three because we may not know. And a three doesn't necessarily mean that there's a judgment, right? A three means maybe there's more information that I need. Or maybe the child doesn't want to be identified with any spiritual religious group or culturally identify, right? And that's okay too. But we still need to have these conversations about it. Go ahead, Andre. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking for the uh, the icon. Raise your hands. So, yeah, it's not there. Um, so with that example, let's say for example, the child the, and, and um, we don't speak about religion at all. Do I rate it a zero, or if they tell me that they are affiliated with a, with their spirituality, do I rate it a zero? It's kind of like a gray area for me, at least, because. But I, I mean, in reference to taking the exam, the the certification. Where do I grade that person if they don't speak about it or if they do speak about it, then of course it's a zero. But if they don't speak about it, then where do I rate it then? So when we think about rating and you don't have evidence, we want to be able to rate it a three, right? Because we want conversations to be built upon these fronts. But again, if they say, well, I don't really identify with any spiritual religious group, then they don't, right? We're going to really mark that because that is really telling the story of that youth and that family. So we're going to put it a three. A three, again, is not no value judgments, right? It means that there's no strength identified. Maybe they don't want to build upon it, right? If they say, well, I am involved in a spiritual or I practice religious practices, then how do you have more conversations to really figure out, like, when do you go? How does it work for you? What do you like about it, right? And start really engaging them into these conversations. And then you can really figure out, is that a centerpiece strength? Is that something worth building on? Are, do they have access to the church? Can they make it to the church, right? And then we start looking at that through a different lens. It depends on how we ask the questions too. But that's great because it's something that, you know, we tend not to think about. It's almost like, well, all right, spiritual zero, cultural zero, talent, right? But we really want to take the time to really explore these drums with them and really see how they really support healthy development long-term. Raise your hand. One more question. Go ahead. I need lips too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just, I have, I, I like that perspective. And thank you for clarifying that, Cynthia. I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what you're, what you're conveying is that if the person, if the person um says I, I'm, 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 I'm close to my spirituality, but I can't get transportation, and that's a different rating. Then, if the person says I'm not interested in exploring my spirituality. Exactly. Okay. Right. Because with strength, we want to support them. So if they are connected to a religious group, right, and they can't just get there, how can we get them there? What can we do to support that strength, right? It's the same way we think about when we're thinking about a talent, right? When a talent is presented to us, we just don't leave it hanging. We start exploring YMCA's, other groups, online things, right, and really connect them because it's really about connecting them to this. So yes, absolutely, you would want to connect them, especially if they're saying that they are involved. Anything else? All right. So let's jump into this practice because you know there's no such thing as a training without practice. So let's look at Chance, right? So Chance is a 10-year-old with ADHD. He loves to play guitar hero after school. He wants to be a professional guitar player and hopes that he can play in a band. At recess, Chance and his close friends challenge each other to air guitar for fun. The teacher reported that Chance has a difficult time focusing on his classwork and has become restless when asked to finish his assignments. His mother, Alice, has established a homework routine for Chance, which best supports when he is able to help him. So thinking about chance and thinking about the strengths item, right? Immediately, what strengths are jumping out to you? You can check them in, you can unmute yourself. Immediately, what do you see here? I 
would say talent and also um, the the family because his mother seems to have a good support. Yes, absolutely. What else? Relationship with peers, Andre said. Okay, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I'm just gonna go back to just look at the items, All right? What else do we see? And this is just a, a, what, a paragraph of a vignette. And you see how we're having co uh, conversations about these strengths without really looking at the strength until I just went back, right? Jessica says optimism, absolutely. And why is it optimism? What evidence gives you optimism, Jessica? Wrong way. I think about the guitar and that he has hopes for, you know, he wants to play in a band someday Absolutely. and be a professional band player. So there's some optimism there. Absolutely, right? He wants to be, what was it? He wants to play in a band and become a guitar artist when he grows up. Absolutely, he's optimistic, right? Patricia, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I was going to say that he's goal-oriented due to him um, knowing that he wants to be a a guitarist when he's when he grows up so when we think about goal oriented absolutely right we're looking at that as also optimism right he has a goal for something in the future in the life right so absolutely he wants to do this guitar thing and he's only 10 years old right what else do we see Do you see any resilience or internal strengths for him? Does he know he has this talent? Does it help him? Yeah, right, something worth exploring. So I'm gonna push you guys a little further. How would you go about developing the strength of the talent and interest? So how can you really built that in because when we're thinking about a plan of care we just don't only want to include the needs right we want to include these friends too so when we think about resources and, and and things to heighten or develop the strength of talent in this case him being a guitar or liking guitar mm -hmm. how can maybe we explore that go ahead john go ahead oh <laughs> Oh me! Oh, who, oh, um, maybe exploring any palliative uh, care, like uh, maybe uh, music therapy or art therapy, or something that can help expound on um, what he likes to do, his interests. Yeah, absolutely. Looking for free concerts or events that happen. Well, not these days, but you know, back when COVID didn't hit, right? But there's so many different ways that we can really develop this strength. So he can really be able to use that for his healthy development. So that's just one example. Any questions so far before we move into the real action level of the child's friends domain? No? Okay. So let's look at strengths and, then, and let's look at the action level for it. So again, when we're thinking about strengths, we want to remember that the action levels for strengths are really unique from the action levels of the needs, right? All the items are really rated through the lens of action, and we are going to review this four point scale right now. So rating of a zero on a strength means that the level of that strength is a centerpiece strength. And the action level is how we want to use it, is to really include it into the plan of care, right? Because it's going to be central to plan. When we think about the centerpiece, we're really thinking about a well-developed strength, wherein the child can really actively draw upon it to really support their healthy well-being or even enhance their well-being. This particular type of strength really is central to planning, right? Because it can really help resolve behavioral, even functional problems that the youth may be experiencing. So an example of this is, think about a youth who is actively interested and really involved in sports and feels good about their involvement in sports. We wanna be able to recognize that and include it into the plan of care if it's relevant, right? Because this young person knows how to utilize that specific strength. When we're thinking about the one is that we know the strength is actually present and that it's useful for planning. 
but maybe the child is not fully engaged. Maybe we want to be able to tweak it. So let's use the same example. So let's say that that young person is in um, the sporting events, but maybe misses a class or two, or, or is not always fully engaged. We want to be able to really tweak it to make sure that the opportunity gets to a center of strength and you can use it into your essential for planning. When we're thinking about the two, I like to consider that more so as a low-hanging fruit because a strength has been identified, but it needs building and development. So think about Chase, just the, the young person before, right? We know he likes guitar. We know he wants to be in a band. We know he plays air guitar with his friends and whatnot, right? Now we have identified our strength, but how do we build upon that strength? And that's what we really tend to talk about is how do you really build these strengths that have been identified and really turn them into useful strengths? And then the three is no strength identified. And again, there's no value judgment. It either means they may not want to continue to explore or want to develop that strength and or we may not have enough information about it, right? So the strength creation or identification, right? We may want to know and the efforts that are needed to be able to identify that strength and see if it's worth building or if the child does not want to be able to build on it. Any questions? Because we know what I ask questions because usually it's because we're doing a practice. So one thing to add to that, so I think, um, and this is kind of building on Andre's point earlier, right? So for certification testing, you know, this kind of the three is it's not there, right? So you don't they don't mention it at all on those vignettes. Um and as Cynthia, that's something that's a two, Cynthia's pointing out, I like that idea, the low hanging fruit. It's something that's there as a strength, but it's not useful at the moment, but it's something that potentially could be built, right? So in practice, which again, I try to align the certification test with practice as much, but in practice, there's a couple different ways in which um, the twos and threes may play out, right? So two is clearly like, it's something that you mostly, it's not like it doesn't come up at all, although that's possible, right? Sometimes it's something you inquire about, but it's just not a strength, right? Um, and then you have that choice. Is this something you want to spend time building or not? And that decision about whether you're going to spend time building it is directly related to how impactful you think it can be if they have this strength. Right? Um, the two, and this is, you know, it took me a little while to figure this out, but the two sometimes is a strength that's there. Um, and it may, may be a low hanging fruit, but I just, there's no part of my work that I can incorporate developing that into something that's going to be useful. I know it's a strength, it's there, I, but it's not something I'm going to be able to use in my work. You know, so the joke I usually make, it's about, you know, the kid who's like an amazing trombone player, but, you know, we're working on stuff that has nothing to do with that. And I can't, there's no way I'm going to work it in to this kid's trombone playing into the work we're going to do together. So on my assessment, I'm putting it too, which just means that, yeah, it's a strength, but we're not using it. And which means it's not useful, right? Like that's really what that means. Um, it's just not useful in the context of the work we're doing together. And so I, I try uh, when I'm work, completing assessments to really be focused that there's not a ton of zeros and ones on my completed assessments. There's a handful, because I'm not using like six or seven things. I'm probably using three, maybe two, three, maybe four things. Um, at any given time in my work with folks. So the zeros and ones are pretty narrow. Um, sometimes I then, if that's the case, I have a bunch of twos where I feel like, well, the person has some strengths. It's just not all those things are going to be used in our work together. So I just want to point that out as something that doesn't kind of come up in the certification testing as much, but really is practice related, seems to come up quite a bit is, you know, we do have a bunch of these strengths, but we don't really we're not touching on them or using them in R. And so how do I rate that or how do I make sure I incorporate that? So uh, questions here, Andre? Sorry, I just had a question. So I know that um, I, I, with Chance, the, the, the prior example that we gave with regards to religion, how would you have rated that religion for him, that piece? Yeah, so that cultural identity piece, since it didn't come up, it's a three. But, um, you know, I, but if I, if let's say chance is the real person, right. Um, and you know, uh, 
one of the things that he shares with me at some point is that, you know, I don't, uh, yeah, I'm not engaged in any religion stuff, but I'm always curious about it. Cause my, one of my friends, these air guitar kids, he goes to church every weekend. And I'm always wondering like, what's going on with that? Or, and so as we talk about it, we feel like, well, maybe it'd be cool to go one day with him or just check it out or something. And we talked to his mom about it. So it's a three, but it's a three where I say actually might try to build that or develop that. Right. Um, I also want us to think too, about cultural identity as a little bit, you know, as, and I, Cynthia was explaining this, it can be a really broad category, especially for teenagers. So maybe chances age and older to do identity formation. And so the way I would always conceptualize this with youth, instead of asking about the race, religion, ethnicity, I really have conversations about like, who are your people? Like what, you know, who's your, what is your crew? Like, what does that look like? Who are the people that you kind of identify with? It's like, that's part of who I am. And why are those your people? And what makes that? And try to build conversations out that way. Um, you know, I was working with a youth once. Uh, he had a spinal injury. It was like a C8 break. He actually had been shot by his mom. Um, and so, you know, at the foster care agency in which I was working, he and I got pretty close over the years. Uh, he struggled with identity because at the age of 11, when he was shot, his entire life changed, right? Like all the things he was used to doing, he could no longer do. All the people he knew were now gone, right? Those are, and so he kind of was floating through this world without a real sense of who the new Douglas was because the old Douglas was not, was not really him anymore given what had gone on. So we did kind of have this task of building up a new identity, really of who is this new Douglas who's in a wheelchair, who will never be able to walk again. And who are his people? And what does he like to do? Because he can't do some of those old things that he used to like to do. And I think in that, right, that we would have called that like a three on cultural identity. By the time we were done doing our work, it was a one. Like he had, he was involved in like Special Olympic sports. He, in his school, he had kind of made connections and new friends. He would really, and he had a strength around adaptability and persistence and all these other strengths. But we were able to use those to kind of develop this other area of strength of really giving him a self of identity that could carry him through these things. So I like um, to think about some of these items as these really big buckets sometimes in which we can put a bunch of work where we feel like, well, that's going to be helpful to this kid in the long run, or this is where this youth has an interest in going with things where I might be able to kind of build on or develop where their kind of their interest already lies. And kind of like a, a simpler way to kind of understand the, the action levels and the level of strength is to kind of just remember that the zeros and the ones are really always going to be considered these useful terms. And those action levels are really going to be communicating to us that the youth can really access those strengths during their day-to-day -day life, whereas the twos and the threes are always going to be considered strengths to develop. So anytime you're rating a two and a three, know that those are strengths to develop or strengths to explore. I don't want to just say develop because not every strength needs to be developed. So develop and or explore and kind of just have it like that, right? So with that being said, let's look at this practice and let's think about Chase and thinking about the persistence item specifically. So here, the first part, the top of it, we're going to have a three. So we're going to work our way down. So when we think about functioning, Jace is a 15 year old and recently quit his job after his first week. He felt he was not good at it, right? Action level, there's no evidence that Jace is persistent, right? We would rate that a three. Then a little bit more information now, right? Six months past now, Jace is eager to work again and apply for the summer youth program, but his application was denied because he filled out the form wrong. He is not sure about applying again. His mom is encouraging him to apply again, right? Now we think about it, we want to read this a two as Jace wants to really work, but is disturbed that he was not chosen last year. His mom is supporting him to apply again. Now we have three, six months again, right? So Jace has begun working as a cashier through the summer youth program and finds the hours challenging. 
However, he is grateful that he actually has a job and this time he's not giving up. Now we will look at that as a useful strength. We will want to rate that a one as he is still willing to work despite the challenging hours, right? He's not giving up, whereas before he was quitting, right? Before he was, he was eager, but didn't want to apply again. So six months later, now Jace has been working and saving his money for the last year and hopes that he will have enough one day to buy a car. So now Jace has steady employment for a year and has been saving up his money. This is a centerpiece strength. We would want to rate that a zero. So we see the functioning and we see the action level and how it moves from a three to a zero. Right, and this is kind of what we want to have conversations about. And persistence is one of those items that we tend not to, or really understand what is asking, right? But it's really about their ability to continue through challenges, through barriers, through obstacles, even if they are support around. Whereas the two, his mom was really supporting him um, around that, right? That low hanging fruit, we have mom to support him, he's not giving up. And how do you work through that to make sure that he's able to develop this run as healthy development? Okay. Any questions? So one thing I'll just say, because I, um, before you had sent this to me, Cynthia, I've not seen this kind of breakout. I think this is like a super helpful thing to do. And as I try to learn strengths to just kind of break them out like this, well, like what's a three look like, or what's to, for this specific item, just another thing to kind of, you know, if you're in a supervisory role or you're supporting kind of others and in, in, or you're teaming up, on trying to learn these things. I think breaking it out like this is a super helpful way to think through not only what is the strength talking about, but how might it look at each one of these action levels? So um, I really like this. Yeah, I think, um, you know, as we learned before, people learn differently, right? People need examples visually, right? People can just talk it through and get it. So it's important to break it out. And like Martha said, you know, being able to have the care manager, someone else really be able to break this down and have it identified and see how do you really rate this functioning on an action level? And how do you support something uh, for a centerpiece? So, I, I, Andre, I think we will have this up in our website. So many of you guys are familiar with this flow chart or this lesson tree, right? I hope everyone says yes. Right, this is a nice way to really help us navigate through the strength. So when we look at this, we're seeing at the very top of it, right? Is there evidence of a strength in this area? And this one is a little bit different because now we include, and we're gonna break this down. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll just look at that one for the sake of time. Let's just look at the breaking them down into buckets and really going through them one by one. Okay. So assessing for strengths. So is there evidence of a strength in this area? If it's no, right, we want to rate this item a three for no strengths. And then we want to determine if the item should be built as a part of a strength-based plan of care, right? We want to explore, does it need to be built upon? Then if there is evidence of a strength in the area and it's potential strength, then we want to look at it as, is it something that will change for the strength to be rated A2? Determine if this item should be built as part of a strength-based plan of care, right? So this is a nice way to kind of walk you through for assessing for strength. So now, is there evidence of a strength in this area? Yes. And you see when it's yes, it's a little longer, right? Is this strength, is this a strength that would be used for planning? If it's yes, then rate this item of a one if it's useful, but not a centerpiece, and we rate the item of zero if it's a centerpiece. Is this strength that would be used in planning? If it's no, is it something that we can use or change for a strength to be realized and rate this item a zero? Is the strength that would, is this? Okay, is this a strength that will be used in planning? 
So again, the zeros and the ones are gonna be considered useful strengths. But having this guide to walk you through and assessing strength really helps really visualize how would that look for that young person and really start thinking about how do you build it in the plan of care? How do you support that youth? Or how do you connect them to resources that may be needed for the twos and the threes? Now, there are obstacles, and one common obstacle when rating this domain is that unlike the other domains in the CANS, the strength domain action levels are inverted, right? We start from the three as no evidence, and we work ourselves up to the zero, where is the center key strength. And doing this work, we really often come from a strength-based approach. And you heard me say this before, is that we look at the strength and we automatically have zeros attached to it. And as I said earlier, when we do that, it's really a disservice for that youth. And I'm gonna pause there and ask you, why would it be a disservice to rate these 13 items, 12 items, 11 items, zeros for that youth without having conversations? Why would that be a disservice? And think about stress because oftentimes we tend to overrate them too. A lot wondering. of times, a lot of times we want our care plans to be strength based and that language so that, you know, it's really taken to successful goals, right? So the needs and then the strengths to build on so that we can, you know, they can fulfill their goals and, you know, dreams and things like that um, and show that we have progress with all of those um, objectives, if that makes yeah. sense. No, it makes sense. Working from that strength-based approach is ideal, right? But we want to be able to really rate what's there, right? Just like needs. We want to rate what's there. And when we look at this, we can see these action levels, right? We see those in green, well-developed center key strength, no evidence of a need, right? Those are the zeros, right? That's communicating good news, right? History of a need or a possible need, and then useful, strength is useful. A one, again, the zeros and the ones are always going to communicate better news than the twos and the threes. The twos and the threes, there's a lot of either skill building that needs to happen, or we need to allocate some resources to really help, such as when a need is interfering with functioning, or a strength is potentially useful, or a need is dangerous or disabling, or currently not a strength. When we view the twos and the threes, we want to know that we want to put services into place. Thank you, Mark. Any questions on that? Because we want to remember that transformational really means about being transparent and really being honest with the families that we are serving and really education, education, educating them on really that power of strength and what it can help and what it looks like for a young person. You know, when we think about our own strength, you know, we tend to tap into a lot of things that really help us when we are stressed out. During these COVID times, I'm, I'm sure we picked up other hobbies that we didn't think we would do. So we want to be able to really speak to these families and let them know how powerful a strength can be for their day to day life. You have a question, Andre? Or are you just fixing the camera? So when we're thinking about this, right, strengths are not always visible, right? So what we see and what we ask are, looks very differently. So I have up on the screen, does the child have long-standing relationship with adults? Does the child have long-standing relationship with relatives? When we're thinking about this question, which of these three items here is that really directed to? Relationship stability. Right. Strengths are not always visible, and therefore, sometimes it's really important to really ask questions to really get to rating the cans properly. Now, let's look at another way of thinking about something. Is it easy for a child to make decisions when faced with challenges? Does the child find it stressful to change routines? 
if we're asking these questions or thinking about these questions, what item are we thinking about? Adaptability. Absolutely, right? Is it easy for that child to make decisions? Does that child find it stressful to change ideas or even routines, right? And then we have the last one. What does the child do well? Does the child recognize their skills as strengths? Can they utilize those strengths when they experience adversity? Which item is that? It's the last one. There. Resilience. Thank you, right? We wanna think about that because when, remember that resilience and internal strength is really about the child's ability to really recognize his or her own strength and really use them when they need support to really develop their healthy well-being. So when we think about it, you know, we're not always gonna see strength, but we can ask certain questions that would lead us to, to be able to rate this item properly. So let's look at the next one. So is the child involved with a religious community? Ooh, that's a tricky one, right? Is the child interested in exploring spirituality? Again, the item is really directed into spiritual and religious. Does the child stick with tasks even when they're difficult or challenging, right? Does the child have, have a hard time finding motivation to stick to an assignment or a project? Does the child need help from others, whether it's for time or encouragement to actually finish something that they have started? Um, when and how does the child show frustration? So there's many ways that we can really ask questions to really, really gear us to, to rating the item properly. And is the child able to stay motivated until the task or activity is completed? So here's another um, example as we near our one hour. So we spoke about the importance of strength and the value of really incorporating them into our planning. One thing we always need to remember is that we never, ever, ever, I repeat, never, ever, ever want to interfere with the strength in order to address a need. So what does that really mean? So let's look at this example. So Kiara is 16 years old and is the head cheerleader in her school. She joined the team two years ago when she was 14 years old. She's made many friends and is described as respectful and outgoing. Kiara struggles with math and has failed several math exams this quarter. She is at risk of failing the class. Tutoring is an option, but the schedule conf conflicts with her cheerleading practice. So as a care manager, what would you suggest here? So here's a young person who's head cheerleader, who's great, has been with them for two years, but is at risk of failing and the tutoring interferes with her practicing. How many of you have talked this through with mom or caregiver? What are some suggestions? to address this need without interfering with this strength. Can she attend tutoring earlier or later? Right, what else? What are some other options? When we're having these conversations with, with families, right, specifically, we want to help that real, you know, that caregiver to really understand the importance of a centerpiece strength, right? Because what happens is, is that if you pull her from this and put her into math tutoring, is she going to excel at math tutoring now? Because now she's able to go? No, she may resist it. She may not like it. She may hate cheerleading now because, you know, you took her out from it, right? So you never really want to interfere with that strength because it's, because it's going to get in the way. Right, you want to be able to have a menu of solutions or even brainstorm with the caregiver on other options that really do not interfere with the strength. So we want to always keep strengths front and center. And when we're addressing needs, we want to make sure they don't conflict. Any questions? Mark, you want to add something? Nope, just uh, oh. I know we're at time, so I'm... Um... Uh, we, we made it all the way through. I'm excited. I know. We had two minutes. Any <laughs> questions? Was this helpful? Did you guys sign up for our other lunch and learns? <laughs> I, 
Yeah, I think it was very helpful for, for you know, just hearing other mindsets behind how you come up with the evaluations. I put the slide deck too, Andre, in the chat box. So for anybody, if you can download it there, if you're logging in on a tablet, um, just shoot me an email and I'll send you the slides. Uh, Cause if you're on a tablet, sometimes you can't download them um, from the chat box. And I will be able to email them too since I emailed you guys the link too. So you can shoot either one of us um, an email. So for the most part, you guys already have our contact information, but if you don't, here it is again. So, you know, me, Cynthia, we have Barry, who's the Institute Lead for Western, Sarah, who's the Institute Lead for Capital, Mary, who's the Lead for the Hudson Valley, and then we have our Institute staff, which is Mark, Brendan, and Josh. So you can reach out to any one of us at any time, and we will be there to help and support you with whatever it is that you need. So this concludes our Lunch and Learn for the 6 to 21. We will have a zero to five lunch and learn or strength as well, maybe sometime next year. So plug yourselves into these lunch and learns if, if you really want to have more information or if it's helpful or, you know, we have the trauma module actually is the next one coming up. It's the zero to five and it's on January 14th at nine, I believe. So make sure you register for that and we'll discuss everything trauma related to the zero to five group. So thank you guys. Appreciate your time and participation. Thanks, guys. Thank you again, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.